Today we're going to be going over the Siemens TI selection tool and what can it do for you. They have a cloud-based version or they have a version that you can download onto your computer. One of the nice things about the cloud version is it's always going to be up to date with the latest and greatest updates. Or you can use the downloadable version. One nice feature about that is that you can save and import and export projects in between different downloadable versions. Today we're going to be using the online version, cloud version though. So when you first get there, there's a nice splash screen that's going to have some different information on it as well as some of the different product features. But what we're going to be doing today is we're going to select a new device. So once you get into this new device screen, you can see that you've got several different options of different types of devices like PLC drives, HMIs, wireless and network communications software. Let's go ahead and we're going to configure a new PLC rack today. So we're going to click on controllers. Once you get into controllers, you see you've got several different options up here, or there's even a filter option, or they just have all of them right here. Let's say we want to go ahead and do an S7-1500. So we could click advanced controller here, or we could just select it here. But for our purposes, let's click advanced. Now you'll see that we've got a 300, a 400, and a 1500. So we're going to click on the 1500. Once you click on that, it gives you some options to give it a different name. So let's just give it a test, as well as you can put in notes and other things like that. Here's some information on the device, as well as lots of other options that you can select if you want to know, if you know that you're going to be doing standard or fail safe. Once you enter that information, you can click on configuration. And here it simulates the PLC rack that most everyone knows. So with that, we're going to go ahead and click on add module. And you can see it kind of gives you just the options that can go in this rack. So first, you know, in slot one, we need to add a CPU. So when we click on CPU, there's a couple of different options within the 1500 family that we can do. But for our purpose, we're just going to hit standard and we'll select just this 1511-1. So once you enter this, it's going to ask, do you want to enter more than just one, which doesn't necessarily apply for the CPUs. But then you also have options and accessories like a memory card or other runtime options. So once we know the select the options that we want, we're going to go ahead and hit insert module. And there we have it. So this is a great tool. Not only does it kind of give you the option to pick different PLCs and other items, but it also helps you configure and make sure that you don't have any errors or warning messages and have everything set and good to go before you actually order it. So now in slot two, let's go ahead and add a module. And here's our options on digital input, output, analog modules, communications, all sorts of different things. So let's go ahead and put in some digital input modules. When we select the module, how many do we want to create simultaneously? Let's do three. Now we also have some options here that we can do different types of cabling that have options for these input output modules. We're going to go ahead and pick these standard ones. Once we do that, we'll hit insert and there's our modules. All right, so now let's go to slot zero. We're going to need to enter a power supply for this unit. Unless we select a 120 direct from the wall or we have a 24 volt power supply already that we want to use for this, you can get a power supply specific for that PLC. So let's just go ahead and we'll select this 25 watt, 24 volt DC. So now we have that in there, we should be good to go. We also probably want to add some output modules. So now that we've added in our modules, let's go ahead and check and see what messages or errors we have. So you'll see here we have zero errors, zero warnings, but we have three information icons. So in here, it's going to let us know, hey, these aren't issues, they're not faults or warnings, but just FYI for you. So now you can tell, here for our external loads, we need a, an external power supply. And also it does the calculations and things in there to kind of tell you what size memory card you might need. And here's another note in here telling you about your 24 volt DC load. We entered a 24 volt power supply, but this is telling you that you can use a load power supply to supply load to your input output modules just like right here in that message. Once you've selected everything that you want to do, you can add different accessories or different items. You can click on here and go to accessories, add accessories, and you'll see that you can add different accessories for these. So in here, I'd be able to add different modules of wiring and cabling or other items like that. Once I have what I need, I can go into my shopping cart and this will give you an order list for everything that you need for this PLC rack that you just created with the part number, when you click on the part number, it's going to hyperlink you back to the Siemens website to see it. This is a great way to build out your PLC rack, and then you can take this, export this information into Excel or other means. If you do multiple projects within TI Selection Tool, you can save these projects and have multiple ones here. So if you're trying to do your whole plant facility, multiple PLC racks, drives, HMIs, you can have different projects here saved in different selections. So that way you can go in and pick what you need and get what you need. If we go back to new device and we select an HMI panel, Let's just select a comfort. We'll select the 15 inch comfort panel. There's really nothing else that we need to configure for this. We can go into the accessories and add accessories if we like, such as an SD card. So we've added that in. So now let's go back. Our cart has been updated and we're good to go there. There wasn't much to configure for the comfort panel, but if we go back to the projects, you'll now see that we have another project here called comfort panel. So that's pretty much it for the TI selection tool. 